Hi guys, my name is Megan with TheBlogWilsonHomestead.com and today I am doing a Q&A about our new farmhouse and land. It wasn't that long ago that I did a Q&A about our old farmhouse, so I'll link that one down below if you guys are interested. But I've had so many questions about this new homestead that we moved to. We just recently moved to a 10 acre homestead and we were able to buy this house and this land. So I thought I would do a new Q&A more of an update Q&A with the house that we're currently living in. So I went over on Instagram and I put a question box and I asked you guys for all of your different questions and you guys really came through. I've got a lot of questions to answer today, so let's get right into this. So the first question is, do you live in an area that you are familiar with? And that's kind of a yes and a no because I, it's only half an hour away from where we were before. It's in the same valley. A lot of people that we know live here in this town, but it's a totally different town. And it's way more spread out than the town that we were living in before. So I totally thought moving here, it would be like, I already kind of know the area, it's like no big deal. But I'm actually finding that I have no idea where anything is here. <laughs> I'm like having to relearn where I want to go grocery shopping and like, I was driving through the middle of town like, I have no idea where the craft store is. I was like trying to find some crafts for the kids. I'm like, I don't know where to go for this stuff. Like if we were back in the old town, I was like, I have my stores where I go for things and I know where to get things. <laughs> but I've actually been surprised with how much I don't know where stuff is here. So we're kind of like having to relearn where to go for stuff, even though it's only half an hour away. So that's been a little bit surprising to me. So. Kind of yes and no. How big is the new house? So this house is 1,456 square feet. So it's actually only 200 square feet bigger than our last house. But it seems so much more massive. Like specifically the living room and the master bedroom are so much bigger. Like we really need to buy another couch and another couple chairs because the living room is so big that with the furniture that we had in our old house, which by the way, in the old house was terribly cramped. We almost had too much furniture in the living room. It like feels so empty in here. And also like our piano, which was in the living room at our last house, basically it felt like it took up the entire room. And it's just like in this room, it looks so tiny on that wall over there. And it's just like, how is this only 200 square feet bigger? Because it feels so much bigger than that. But I also think that because our last house was a, a double story, the stairs took up quite a bit of space. So between the stairs and having an extra 200 square feet, this house has been feeling very roomy, which I'm really excited about. Are you going to paint the outside of the house? Yes, eventually. Eventually everything will be changed and remodeled and painted. The outside of the house isn't gonna happen for a while because we need to we have other things that need to happen first. Like basically the first thing we have to do on the house is jack it up and fix the foundation or a new foundation. So we don't really wanna to do too many other things before that. The siding that's on the house currently is just old vinyl siding that's getting very worn and it needs to be replaced. So we aren't gonna be painting it until we replace the siding anyway. So we'll replace it and paint it something we really like. I don't know if I'll stick with the white. I, I kinda of liken the white. But I also really liked the dark blue in our last house. I like dark brown. So ideally something that will go with a, another pretty yellow door. <laughs> so if you guys have color inspiration ideas for me, let me know down in the comments because I'm open to all ideas. What is the first thing you are tackling with the renovation? So like I said, the first thing will have to be the foundation, which that probably won't be until next year because it's a big expensive project and we just have too many outdoor things to do this year. And plus with using the funds to actually buy this house, we don't have enough extra right now to actually do the foundation. So we need to wait until next year to do that. But that'll definitely have to be the first thing because we don't want to start like fixing things on the inside and then jack up the house and have something shift and break, like specifically tile. You really don't want to do tile and then jack up the house because that could totally crack. Because it's like, stuff's gonna shift. You can't like just perfectly lift it up without moving anything. There's gonna be like a little bit of wonkiness going on. So ideally that would be the very first thing that happened before we fixed anything at all. And then once 
the foundation is fixed and we've put the house back down, then we have big plans to change like almost the entire layout of the inside of the house and just make it more ideal for a big family because we want to have a lot of kids. So we're like moving the bedrooms around and evening up the size of the bedrooms. We're going to be putting the kitchen and living room right next to each other so they flow into each other, which I just love that style. We're moving, we're probably moving the kitchen to the other side of the house because I really like the views of the Rocky Mountains better than the Sapphire Mountains. <laughs> so I want to be able to look out my kitchen window at the Rocky Mountains. So it's going to be a huge project, but yeah. And we plan on being here for a long time, so it'll just take a long time and be a long-term kind of a project. Will your decorating style change up at all with the new house? No, probably not at all because I, I really love like more of the farmhouse antique like old style. So our other house was more of a, I feel like it was a little bit more of a modern farmhouse than this one will be. I really want to put, bring more like of a like really old and antique feel into this house than our last one had, like not so much modern farmhouse. I want it to feel like an old, like, you know what I mean? Like an old farmhouse, it's full of antiques and that kind of a style. But I mean, I'm using the same artwork and decorations that I had in the last house and I still really love the same style generally, so it's not gonna change a lot. I'm sure my tastes and styles will change like just very slowly over the years, but it's still generally like, I really like old vintage antique stuff that looks like it's been around for a long time. Do you plan to renovate slowly as you have the money or do it quicker? We plan to do it slowly because like I said, we have enough land that we can be here for a long time. So this is probably going to be more of a five to 10 year project versus our last house. The goal was to have it a two year project. It turned out to be a three year, but that's okay. So we probably won't even be leaving here until we're done having kids. Like we're gonna be here for a long time. So because of that, we are just gonna take it more slowly, try to space out spending the money. We also wanna do it a lot more high quality than the last one. Our last house was like our very first fixer upper. Um, some of the things we did more like cheaply, like we did absolutely everything ourselves and like the wall, the shiplap on the walls was like plywood, which that was back when plywood was actually cheaper. So we were trying to save money. That would not be cheap right now, but we just want to do things really high quality and like really make it to last because we want to be here for a long time. So it'll be a longer project. Any more animals or not right now? So when you guys have asked this question and when I was writing the blog post for this to go along with this Q&A, which I will link down below because all these questions are answered in a blog post as well. And I had already written the blog post and I wrote that we are not planning on getting any more animals this year because we already got, we have the chickens, we have the rabbits, we bought sheep this year, we've hatched chicks this year, we've added a new breed of chicks where we added silkies to our flock. And we're actually going to, once they're grown up, we're going to be like raising them to breed and sell chicks. So like we've added a few things and just with this, the busyness of moving and like settling into a new place and we're also gonna have a baby in a month <laughs> and we have a one-year-old and a two-year-old and so it's just like chaos so we were like we're not gonna get any more animals this year which is what we always say and then something comes along and we're like let's just get one more what's the big deal so we're actually going to be getting a dog which isn't a huge deal it's not like we're getting a milk cow, but we're driving this Friday up to Great Falls to buy a four month old puppy. <laughs> like I need another thing on my plate when I'm gonna have a baby in a month. I feel like I'm a little bit of a nut, but this is like the, the perfect breed. It's like perfect guard dog breed. It's really calm, it's well behaved. It's the same breed as, it's actually the sibling of the dog my cousins just got, or my husband's cousins, and they've loved their dog, and I'm just like, it's such a good opportunity, we just need to jump on it, because these people, are, they don't just breed 
dogs. Like this is like more of a one-time thing. So like we just need to do it. So we are getting a, a puppy on Friday. But other than that, we're not getting any more animals this year. I know I'll say that and then I'll probably end up finding a milk cow next week and buying it. So you never can trust that when we say we're not going to get any more animals this year because that's probably not true. As much as we have good intentions to hold off. <laughs> but we we are really wanting to wait on the milk cow or any steer, like beef steers or hogs or anything that's going to be grazing on the pasture because like right now our sheep are just in the side yard, our chickens are around the house and that is because the people sprayed our pasture with an herbicide before we moved in and they were trying to be helpful and that was very not helpful. But I would specifically feel uncomfortable about a milk cow. I feel like the herbicide would really go into the milk a lot more. So we're a lot of the reason we're holding back on getting any more animals this year is because of the pasture. We want to give that herbicide time to wear off. So maybe next year, and if not next year, definitely the year after, we'll be getting hopefully a Jersey cow. We want to get hogs. We want to get geese and ducks. We've got big, big plans for this place. What are your plans with all that land? As I just said, we have really big plans and not just with animals. So we have kind of our list of animals that we want to get. We'll try to add a couple a year maybe, but we're trying to lay out the property where we, like, we want to have an area for an orchard, we want to have an area for a garden. We are deciding like what like big trees we want to get and like kind of plant at the back of the pasture to block some of our neighbors' houses from us seeing them because we're a bunch of recluses. But just to like improve the view, improve the value of the land, because there is one tree on this place. It's so flat and bare, so it needs some trees. So we've got one area of the pasture that we picked out for an orchard. We've got one corner where we want to do like a cluster of trees in that corner to block the house. So, and then we, we found a really great place to buy some trees, so we're buying Whole bunch of different I'll go over this in another video where I talk about our orchard plans but we found some really cool trees that we're gonna get but yes I will go over more of this in future videos but we have really big plans for this land how old is your house so this house was built in 1923 I'm pretty sure so it's coming up on 100 years old so it's about 20 years newer than the house we just moved out of but it's still a nice old farmhouse which I love what are you most excited about with the new land you know, honestly, one of the things I'm most excited about is the freedom to let the kids play outside without being so worried. Because we were right in town at our last house. We had two city lots, so we had enough room to do some farm stuff. But the yard wasn't even attached to the house. So if I wanted to let the kids play outside, I had to walk them to the yard and close the gate and make sure they were safe. And like, most of the time I wouldn't even let them, let Sophia play out there by herself because we're like in town, like there's just people walking by, like it would just, it just makes me feel very uncomfortable. So it was, I never just had the freedom to like be like, yeah, you just go play out in the yard and she could just like go out the door by herself. That was never a thing there. So I'm so excited about now that the kids are getting older and wanting to do that more, that I kind of just let them out. And like, sure there are other dangers of being in the country like our electric fence and stuff like that. I'm just really excited to have the freedom of just letting the kids go and play and explore and learn things and not just having me watch them all the time. And then of course just the ability to be more self-sufficient and just have the space to do the animal things we want and the, the garden things we want. Like it's just all very exciting. It's what we've been like wanting for so long. So I think that is most of the questions that I got. There are a few that didn't get answered, but if you have any more questions, leave them down below and I will, if I have enough of them, I'll try to do another Q&A. But thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.